squatted in a small shack on the American side of the Mexican border. Sleepy from the ride. Here, take a look. They're all like this, perfect health. 640 of them and there's one load. And what's the price? Same as before. You take the whole load, a dollar and a half a bird. How do you do it, Kane? How do you sell them so cheap? Where do you get them? Look, you want the birds, pay me. Just don't ask any questions. In order to prevent the spreading of a rare but extremely contagious disease known as psittacosis, regulations of the United States Public Health Service do not allow psittacine birds like parakeets to be brought into the country for sale. Enforcement of these regulations is the responsibility of the Customs Service. In my role as Chief, Division of Investigations, United States Customs, I'm going to tell you about one member of a large organized ring of parakeet smugglers whose combined efforts resulted in a million-dollar racket until the long arm of the law eventually put an end to it. Treasury file 4977, United States Customs. The case of the green feathers. Again, Maria? Again you go out tonight? Only for a little while, Papa. My friend have a car, almost a new car, and it rides so beautiful. Like you can't tell the motor is running. And who is this friend with the car? Who is this man who makes your eyes to shine when you talk about him? Americano, Papa. Big, tall Americano, with a beautiful smile and silver to jingle in his pocket. And what do you know about this man? Where he come from? And why he come to Nogales to give you a ride in his car? I like better you go for a ride with Miguel. Miguel, Miguel. Who care about Miguel? When I marry Papa, I don't want to marry a man like Miguel. He's a nice boy, Maria. He have a good farm. And what I can do with a good farm? Feed the pig, take care of the goats, make a family and get so fat I don't fit in a chair? No, Papa. When I marry, I want to live in a big city with lights and music. Oh, where I can dance, go to the movies, see double feature. Not Miguel and his goats. And what do you see with this Americano? Why you come home so late when you go out with him? And why he don't bring you home sometime, eh? Tell me, Maria, tell me. What kind of the man take you out till 4 o'clock in the morning and let you come home alone? He did not, Papa. 4 o'clock, Maria. I wait up for you that night and nobody take you home. From the window, I see you come down the street alone. He, he left me off on the road, Papa, so the car won't wake up the neighbors. We were afraid they might talk. Maria, where did you go with that man that night? Why there is mud on your shoes when you come home? And little feathers on your coat. Little green feathers. Where they come from? What are they? How I know what they are? Feathers. It's no business of yours anyway. It's my business to be your father, Maria. He's here, and you've made me late. Don't go, Maria. I am afraid for you to go with this man. Papa, I am late. You do not go, I say. Please, Maria. You are my heart. Let me go. He asked me why I come home so late, and why you don't bring me home. Well, don't worry about that, Maria. He probably figures you've been going out too much, having too many dates. I might feel the same way, too, if I was your old man. But the feathers. He asked me about the feathers on my coat. 
Oh, well, now look, honey. There's a million and one things you can worry about if you want to start looking for them. Only this kind of stuff ain't important. It is important to me, Ralph. I never do anything like this before. If not for you, I don't do it now. You ain't sorry, are you? And every time we pull one of these jobs, it puts you that much nearer to just what you want. I don't be sorry if you love me, Ralph. I don't be sorry if I know where we go when we finish these jobs. Tell me about Tucson and Phoenix. Tell me about the big, wonderful places you will take me when we have enough money to marry. You are going to marry me, aren't you? Of course I am. Told you I was. Tell me again. Tell me a thousand times so I don't be afraid. And put your arm around me and kiss me. Sure, honey. Sure. What'd it be like to live in Arizona, Ralph? What'd it be like to have a big apartment there? Drive a car, have a shower, eat some time maybe in a big restaurant? Oh, you'll love it, Maria. We'll get ourselves a little place in Phoenix and really settle down. They have big stores in Phoenix. They have lights and music and places to dance at night. They have television there. They got everything, honey. Just wait and see. Everything. You can't possibly watch every inch of the border and all hours of the day or night to prevent someone from slipping across. But we can do the next best thing. You mean, sir, trying to find out where the parakeets are coming from? Exactly. Find out where they're being sold and who's buying them in large quantities. Our information from the Treasury attaches in Mexico City indicates that thousands of these birds are being shipped into Mexico from Holland by air. And their suspicion is that these shipments are intended for smuggling into the United States. Any idea what dealers are handling these shipments? No, not yet. But if we establish surveillance of Mexican airports and the border area, perhaps we can find out. Perhaps we can also find out who's buying from these dealers or any others in abnormally large quantities and be ready for them when they make their next move. It's a pretty big job, Chief, investigating all the parakeet farms and dealers in Mexico. Perhaps we can't check on all of them. But we certainly can concentrate on those in border towns like Mexicali, Nogales, Juarez, as far east as Laredo. Now, you can't handle it alone, Lansing, so there'll be four of you. Each one of you covering a separate sector. Right, Chief. Now, your particular territory will be right in through here, Lansing. These 400 miles on either side of Nogales. That's pretty sparsely settled country up through there, and there shouldn't be too many people handling parakeets in that area. No, that shouldn't be too hard to cover. I covered very much the same ground in the Wellington case. That's exactly why I sent for you. I want you to leave tomorrow, Lansing. Our information is that the traffic in illegal parakeets has been increasing steadily, particularly here in the Nogales area. And we've got to put a stop to it. Yes, sir. For the better part of the next two weeks, thing went from town to town on the Mexican side of the border, talking with parakeet breeders, dealers and others who handle the birds in quantity lots. His purpose was to determine, if possible, whether their sales had increased to any considerable extent in recent months, and also who might be buying the birds in large amounts. Posing as a possible buyer, Lansing became friendly with several merchants in the Nogales area, and during his discussions with them, picked up some information about a new buyer who was purchasing the birds in fairly large numbers. By discreet questioning, he learned that it was a woman, a young, attractive Mexican woman who paid in cash for the birds she bought, packed the cages in an old jalopy of a car, and drove off in the direction of Nogales. And from this same dealer, he was able to get her name, Carmen Gonzalez, the Mexican equivalent of Jane Doe. On the basis of this information, his only chance of discovering her true identity was to keep the market under the closest possible surveillance on the hope that she would show up there before too long. Oh, it's so beautiful, Ralph. Oh, it's the first time I ever have anything so beautiful to wear. You'll have plenty of things, kid. You just stick with me and I'll teach you how to live right. Oh, sometimes you're so good to me, Ralph, when I need you to be good just when I think you don't love me anymore, that you want me only for these jobs. You come along and do something like this. Make me feel so warm inside. Make me feel like we're already married. That's the way I want you to feel, Maria. Because we still got a lot of work to do. 
And I want you to know that we're not just doing it for me. We're doing it for us. Tonight, I know, Ralph. And tomorrow will be the same way, too. It'll always be like this, Maria. Now, look, kid. You've got to shop around tomorrow and buy a whole new setup of birds, just like the last time. Don't buy any more than 50 or 60 in any one place. And keep bringing them back to that old barn, the road to Cananea. You're taking them across the border tomorrow night. The same place as before? No, no, I got a whole new layout for you. I'll show you how it works after you've bought the birds. Well, why don't you buy them yourself, Ralph? Why do you always ask me to buy the birds? I can't take that kind of a chance, kid. I told you I was arrested for crossing the border once without going through customs. Anybody see me buying up parakeets, I'd liable to get ideas. That time you were arrested, it was for carrying birds? Yeah, 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 parrot, you know, the big ones. What? L -l Look, sweetie, it's getting kind of late. I better take you home, huh? I love you, Ralph. I love you too, honey. Muchas amores. Muchas amores. I have the light. Papai, you frighten me. I'm sorry, Maria, but you frighten me more. Going out with these men. Coming home late again, no matter how many times I tell you, he's no good for you. How you know what is good for me? How you know what it's like in a woman's heart? Or what she wants? Or the kind of man that make her feel like a flame is burning inside her? Listen to me, Maria. I have found out about this man. He's a crook, a liar, a cheat. Papa! It's the truth, Maria. Miguel has a friend who is a witness when he goes to jail. This Americano goes to jail three times for smuggling dope, heroin, opium. Anything he can lay a hand on. And for this man, you burn a flame in your heart. I, I don't believe it. Miguel is jealous. That's why he say these things. Miguel say them because they are the truth. Miguel no liar. I don't care. I don't care. I love this man and I'm going to marry him. You ruin your life, Maria. No, you ruin my life. You telling me what to do all the time. Watching me. Never trusting me to go anywhere. Till I was 18 years old, you don't let me go out even with a boy. It's no wonder I want to go out now. It's no wonder I have love for this Americano. I grow up like a dog in this house. Like a dog with a chain around his neck. And all because of... Look at that, Maria. You have said enough. I have hurt you, Maria. I'm sorry I have hurt you. I'm sorry too, Papa. Granado's market under silence, the woman Agent Lansing had been hoping to see finally appeared, making a purchase of six dozen four-week-old parakeets. Lansing watched her as she placed these birds in an old jalopy bearing a Mexican license and immediately started off on the main road to Nogales. Lansing followed this car from the outskirts of Nogales to an old barn on the road to Cananea, where Maria removed the cages from her car and took them inside. A few minutes later, Agent Lansing concealed himself in a location where he could observe the barn at close range. And from here, he saw Ralph Kane drive up to the barn and go inside. Where'd you get them, Granados, please? Si, sí, Granados. Good. So that makes the last batch. It's only about 3 o'clock. I'll have plenty of time to get back up to Tucson and get everything ready for tonight. What time do you want me to cross the border? Well, I guess you better leave Nogales about 11 o'clock. You won't have any trouble getting on the right road. I've got a mark right here in the map. Now, you see? You get on this old dirt road just this side of Natco. And you leave the car about 100 feet this side of the border. Then you have to take the birds out and carry them down this footpath to the American side. Now, there's kind of an old shack right about here. And that's where I want you to bring the birds. But I have to walk all the way to the shack? Look, it's only about an eighth of a mile. You may have to make four or five trips. It all depends on what you can carry at one time. If I can get my truck down to the shack early enough, I may be able to help you. Same as last time. See, si, see. Si. What's the matter, Maria? Don't you care about all this? Ralph, when you be arrested for crossing the border, they send you to jail. 
Well, look now, honey, we got a million things to do. Let's not start asking a lot of silly questions. Now, let's see, what else is there? Oh, yeah, the breadcrumbs. Ralph. Don't forget the breadcrumbs, kid. Soak them in the tequila. And then be sure and feed them to all the birds. We want them to be quiet and sleepy when they leave here. Because if they squawk, they'll have to get us into trouble. Ralph, when you be arrested for crossing the border, what you take with you? I told you, parrots. You not try to take heroin, opium? Who told you that? Look, what difference does it make? You take one thing, you take another. It's all the same. It's not the same to me, because you lied. So I lied. Who do you care how many times I've been in jail or what it was for? You know I'm no angel. If you lie about that, you could lie about getting married. Now, wait a second. We get married tomorrow, Ralph, or I don't take the birds. Tomorrow? What are you talking about, baby? I won't even see you tomorrow. I'll be in Phoenix. I will be in Phoenix, too. I'll not come back to Nogales tonight. We get married tomorrow. Okay, baby. We can get married tomorrow. Only just make sure you bring the birds tonight, huh? I'll uh, see you later, honey. And don't forget, I love you. Unaware that Agent Lansing had the barn under surveillance, Ralph Kane proceeded to his car. Observing him at relatively close range, Lansing recognized Kane as an ex-convict who had only recently been released from a federal penitentiary after serving a term for attempting to smuggle narcotics across the border in the same district where Lansing had worked. Lansing was forced to make a quick decision. Giving up his surveillance of the girl, he decided in favor of following Ralph Kane. The pursuit led back across the American border to Tucson, Arizona, where Kane proceeded to a local garage where he rented a light truck and left his own car behind. Yes, Lansing. And you followed him all the way to Tucson. Well, that's fine. Now, if you need any extra men, get in touch with Haynes. I'll set it up for you from this end. All right, Lansing. Good luck. going with him? I left you and no, Papa. I'm not coming back. Maria, you go with these men because of me. Because I don't be a good father to you. It is not my fault, Maria. I have never bring up a girl before. If your mother was alive. I haven't time to talk to you now, Papa. No time? When you go away and you don't come back? No time to talk to your father. Maria. I know what you do. I have look in your car. You have parrots, the little ones in the back. You keep away from there. It's mine. I buy it with my own money. You buy the car, see, see. But the parrot kids, you buy for him. And for him, you take them across the border. Keep quiet, Papa. For him, my own little girl become a thief. I don't let you do it, Maria. I don't let you go with him. You don't stop me. Sure, nobody was around before I drove up. Everything okay? You got all the cages? See. Si. Any trouble at the board? Anybody see you? No, everything is fine. Good, good. Ralph. Huh? We get married tomorrow? Yeah, yeah. Well, aren't you going to kiss me? Oh, sure, sure. Well, we've got to get moving, kid. I'll go get the truck and... I come for Maria. I come to take her home. How did you get here? Who told you about this place? 
time to go, Maria, before it's too late. The police are looking for you already. Please. They come to the house to ask about the birds. They ask where you are. When? What did you tell them? But I can tell them. Maria's good girl. It's only you that is bad. It's only you that... Listen, you. If you tipped off the cops about... What is that? It sounded like a car. You did put them on us. You did tip off those cops. No. Don't tell me. You know I can hear them out there. They probably got the place surrounded. They're out. What we do? I'll show you what we're going to do. Pop, you got us into this. Now you're going to get us out of it. You're going to take the rap for this whole deal. Tell them it was you brought the birds in here. Make a full confession. So you can run away with Maria? No. I don't do it. You'll do it all right. Go ahead. Shoot me. That won't do any good. If the police are out there, the shot, make them come quick. Who says I'm going to shoot you? What? Come here, Maria. Come here. Now, maybe you'll know I mean business. Open up. This is the United States Customs Office. Open the door and come out with your hands up. Grab the place surrounded. Go on, Pop. Tell them you brought the birds in. Go on, Pop. Tell them. You say one word about us and she gets it. knocking at the door? Where'd you get them? Whose are they? The, the, they're mine. I tagged them across the border. Alone? Who's in this with you? No, nobody. What's in there? Nothing, just an empty storage room. I think I'll take a look, Webster. No. What are you worried about? Uh, just an empty room, I tell you. Why you ask me all these questions? Uh, I have told you I tagged the birth across the border. I have nothing more to say. All right, mister, but I still want to look in this room. Throw the gun out, Kane, and then follow it with your hands up. I know it's you in there, Kane. I've been telling you since 3 o'clock this afternoon. I told you we had the place surrounded. Don't shoot. I give up. Don't shoot. him now. Okay, Webster, bring him along. I'm glad, senor. I'm glad you stopped them. It's better she go to jail than to be with him. pleaded guilty to a smuggling charge and became a witness for the government in its case against Ralph Kane, who it was subsequently discovered had four other drivers besides Maria, helping him smuggle parakeets into the United States. Maria's father, against whom no action was taken, became a witness too for the prosecution. In this drive against the parakeet smuggling ring, Kane was one of five Americans found guilty of smuggling and sentenced to federal penitentiaries for terms of six to eight years. <laughs>